Welcome to this week's episode of Build the Weight Loss Practice of Your Dreams. And today I want to talk about something that can definitely kill your dreams. And that is burnout and overwhelm. And it's rampant. And I know I've experienced it so many times in my own life. And I see it with the practices that I work with, whether it's the surgeon or physician who's just really overworked or the office manager who has a lot of staff turnover, whether it's the team members who are in trouble figuring out how to get their systems in place and get all of their scheduling together so that they are working in a very efficient manner. So it's something that can really kill those dreams and really kill productivity. And overwhelm is a terrible feeling. I know I felt it so many times myself, whether it was when I was a new graduate, and I thought really it was normal to just go for a full eight or 12 hours without um, being able to stop and take a break. Or when I became a nurse manager after just one year out in uh, nursing, or when I became an administrator before I probably was ready. Or when I had our fourth child and had to go back to work a day or two later because we were starting a new entrepreneurial endeavor. Or when I had to have surgery and I was writing a business plan in my surgical bed. I mean, sometimes we do things that we think that we should be doing. And so we continue to do this grind of what we should be doing in our own mind, when instead maybe we should think uh, what we could be doing. Now, I didn't say what we want to do because we can't just walk around in life willy-nilly. I am a rule follower, so to speak, but I've always been one of those people who challenges the rules to a certain degree uh, while still making sure that all my taxes are paid and I'm following the laws and I have all that sort of thing. I am a rule follower because I think structure is really a good thing. That's why I talk about systems all the time. But sometimes when there's something overwhelming us, if we stopped and asked ourselves what could be done, it opens our mind up to all sorts of opportunities and ideas about how we could do something differently to make it a better situation for yourself and probably for all those around you, whether it's your family or your team members. And like I said, I didn't say what you want to do, although that can play into it too, but really asking what I could do instead of just what I should do. And anytime I've left a job, I've always asked, uh, you know, how I could have been better, what they, uh, my team members felt of me or that sort of thing. One of the things they usually would say is that I was a rule follower and they were appreciative of the fact that I was fair to everybody. And I remember one time I worked uh, here at locally and I was working in the computer department. I didn't have much experience in that area. But when I went to leave, one of the things that he said, which kind of surprised me, but now looking back, was true, is that he said, you know, I like the fact that you always question things, you always challenge things. And so sometimes when you're in that sense of overwhelm, taking the time to not stop, to stop and kind of stop the mayhem, instead of just doing always what you know that you, you think you should be doing, replacing that with what could be done. How might you be able to delegate? How might you be able to just take some things off your plate? How might you be able to create a new system in your practice? How might you be able to change the way that you're doing your care delivery? That would be better for not only you, but for your patients. And it helps to involve someone else from the outside, it helps to involve your team. And a lot of times we don't want to take the time because we figure it's going to take much more effort. I don't really have time to do that. But if we stop and take the time to ask, how could we be doing things? things differently. It will really make a huge difference from going through your whole life just doing what you should be doing and really getting to the point where you are burnt out. And I that's one of the things that makes me crazy when I go into a practice, I see people really burnt out. And they've taken uh, these rules that were set by someone either before them or just because it's always been done that way. And they've never really taken the time to look at how could I do it differently? One of the things that has come out of this pandemic is that people have questions question that. And there are going to be some new norms. And some of them uh, have not been pleasant, but some of them are actually going to be an improvement in many cases. So I do encourage you when you're feeling burnt out to pause, take a deep breath, whether it's something at your house, whether it's in your practice, whether it's in your patient care delivery system, pause and ask, how could we be doing things differently? How could we be doing this in a more efficient manner or something that's more enjoyable for everybody here? And I can guarantee you, you will help 
prevent further burnout, and you can also then just improve your overall sense of relief and satisfaction at home and in your uh, job or in your uh, career, your entrepreneurial practice that you have, whether it's you're working for a health system or for someone else or in your own entrepreneurial endeavor, it really is a great way to help provide that relief for you to be able to take care of yourself better, take care of your family better. And it's also a good thing to monitor for your team members. You know, maybe they need something different. Maybe it's a challenge. Maybe you've been giving them so much, it's creating a sense of overwhelm and taking the time to stop and say, you know, instead of what should you always do, thinking it's rules from someone else, what could you be doing that could make it so much better? If you ever want to talk through something like this or have uh, a lot of times you can have a business breakthrough and just a conversation, it's just a conversation, reach out to me, Carol, K-A-R-O-L at Weight Loss Practice Builder. And I look forward to talking with you. And if you're not a member of Bariatric Business Boss, please join. This week, our topic is all about how to prevent or avoid uh, no-shows or late cancels. And then we're going to be getting into some sales training and also how to prepare for a really great 2021. So I hope you found this helpful and I look forward to talking with you potentially in the future. And in the meantime, have a great day and thank you for all you do for your patients. Take care.